first tonight, Governor J.B. Pritzker gave his state of the state address today and central Illinois got quite the highlight. The mayor of Bloomington was recognized by the governor. Here with us today is the mayor of Bloomington, Mboka Mulambwe. Born the youngest of seven children in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Mboka came to the United States in 1989 to pursue a college education. And thanks to financial assistance from ISU, Mboka did that right here in Illinois, graduating with a bachelor's degree in mathematics and then a master's in education. He became a U.S. citizen in 2008, and after a career as a college administrator, Mboka was elected mayor of Bloomington, the first African-American ever to hold that position. Also from today's state of the state address, Governor Pritzker says he wants to make a historic investment into the MAP grant. Now, the MAP grant provides financial aid to students, helping them afford the cost of college. The governor's proposed budget would put 100 million more dollars into the program. But the budget doesn't just focus on investments in higher education. As our Theodora Kulavaris reports, the guests he invited during the state of the state address say the investments in those areas have been very beneficial. Jayshawn Smith is a student at UIS and a MAP grant recipient. Without the MAP grant, I probably would be in and out, take a semester, take some years off. Um, the MAP grant really allows me to stay in college, to focus on college, and honestly, it's likely that I probably wouldn't be in college if I didn't have it. The governor allocated more money for MAP grants in the state, bringing total investments into the program to more than $700 million up 75% from when he took office five years ago. He says that along with Pell Grants will enable students at or below the median level of income to attend the state's community colleges for free. I think the governor realizes that there are a lot of people who would go to college if it wasn't for those obstacles. On top of the governor's budget list, greater investments in early childhood education and child care through Smart Start Illinois, adding up to $250 million. Those resources help us ensure that we're providing high quality program to children and families. In 2021, the state began a program offering unemployed people three months of child care. The child care assistance program helped Itanzia Dawson as she was looking for work. It would have been more hard for me to even find help because it's, my family is not big. So I don't, I don't have the extra help from people to keep my kids outside of them being in the center. Reporting in Springfield, I'm Theodora Kulavaris. We now move to the Twin Cities. It has been one year since seven-month-old Zaraz Walker was reported missing in Bloomington. But are investigators any closer to finding out what happened to that baby? Our Brianna Rittman joins us live from our Twin Cities newsroom with a timeline of events and where the investigation stands now. Brianna. Shelby, last February, Zaraz Walker, a seventh-month-old baby girl, was reported missing. Her mother, Kimberly Burton, was at the center of the investigation. Last year, Burton was arrested for theft and later child endangerment for leaving a five and six year old home alone. She was later arrested for concealment of death during the investigation into Walker's disappearance. In November, Burton was acquitted for concealment of death due to insanity. Psychiatrists diagnosed her with schizophrenia and PTSD. Now Walker's remains have yet to be found and the Bloomington Police Department has presumed Walker to be dead. We reached out to the police department for an update, but they haven't gotten back to us. Shelby. Brianna, thank you. Also in the Twin Cities, some major leadership changes are now coming to Illinois State University. The Board of Trustees has announced that President Terry Goss Kinsey has resigned as of yesterday. Now this Friday, the board will vote to accept a resignation at a regularly scheduled meeting. Goss Kinsey was appointed in May of 2021 as the university's 20th president. Pending board approval on Friday, the interim president will be the vice president for academic affairs and provost and over Tarhul. Here's some news you can use. More books are coming to children in McLean County. The United Way of McLean County and Women United are bringing the Dolly Parton yeah, Imagination yeah, yeah, Library to the, the area. The program will mail one book each month to children ranging from birth to five years business. old, and it's all for free. Yeah. Families with multiple children true. in that age Even range today. can receive sure. a book per child as well. Uh, Unity Way of McLean County is excited to bring the program to the area.
We're just elated that we're able to kick it off now, especially when children have been uh, gone through COVID and the changes that are taking place in their lifestyle and their learning abilities. So this will be hopefully a very comforting program uh, and welcomed program by the families in McLean County. And families can register for the program at imaginationlibrary.com. We turn now to a health alert. Senators grilled top U.S. drug officials about how to tackle the country's fentanyl crisis. Our Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor shows us a look inside today's Foreign Relations Committee hearing. Both parties agreed illegal fentanyl is ravaging the country, but they remain split on what exactly to do about it. It is the deadliest drug threat our country has ever faced. America's top drug law enforcer warned Congress Wednesday illegal fentanyl is flowing into all 50 states and stressed she knows who's responsible. Cartels in Mexico. Republicans like Texas Senator Ted Cruz blamed the Biden administration for widespread fentanyl deaths and want to shut down the southern border. They have turned Mexican drug cartels into multi-billionaires. It is so lucrative, nothing's going to stop it unless we stop it. Mississippi Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith told me she's co-sponsoring a bill that would make anyone charged with drug or human trafficking crimes ineligible for federal assistance, like housing and food stamps. Some common sense things that we needed to put some teeth in to prevent. Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty also wants to crack down on who's supplying fentanyl to the traffickers. If getting China to stop fentanyl production that's killing hundreds of Americans daily is a top priority, then why didn't President Biden mention it at the State of the Union? While Republicans targeted border issues, Democrats like Virginia Senator Tim Kaine said the majority of seized drugs come through legal entry points. I'm sure hoping that the president's budget that comes over here next month asks Congress to do a robust investment in border security at ports of entry. President Biden plans to release his budget on March 9th, and it is likely to include money for more equipment and officers to secure the border. In Washington, I'm Jesse Tenor.